I literally only got this because of how cool it looks. I don't really like PAL Kitty devices, but this one stood out to me. It's exposed little bottom part, the retro beige color, the giant D-pad, the 4x3 screen, the Game Boy size. I just had to check it out for myself. I have a bunch of Ambernick devices. They're basically a competitor to PAL Kitty. Both of these companies release a bunch of handhelds that all use the same chip. There might be some cosmetic differences or maybe an extra button here or there, but for the most part, a lot of their devices all use the same chip. For Ambernick, it's the H700. For PAL Kitty, it's the RK3566. This here is the RGB20 Pro, which is essentially the same device as the RGB30 with the same RK3566 chip which is a little disappointing because it doesn't make it very unique. But I do really like the RGB30, and I never made a dedicated video on it, so I figured it was worth talking about a similar product. What I like about the RGB30 is that it's cheap, it's got decent emulation quality, and it's got a unique one-by-one -one screen. At least, it was unique at the time. This screen is super cool for Game Boy games and arcade games. Well, the RGB20 Pro is a bit cooler looking, with a lot of the same specs, but a four by three screen. So we're losing a little bit of its charm, but it gains a little bit more charm in the looks department. Even though it's virtually the same hardware, it does lose a little bit of emulation quality due to some drama behind the stock operating system it comes with. It's been interesting finally getting to look at a PAL Kitty device after all these years. This video is sponsored by Trade. <gasps> it's pumpkin spice season. <sighs> you gotta be ready at all times for pumpkin spice season. And sure, you can look up a recipe that looks nice on TikTok that'll have you going to the store for spices you don't have, like clove and cinnamon. Or you could do this. Three things. One cup of water, four chai tea packets, and one cup of sugar. I call it spice no pumpkin. That's it, that's all it is. Pumpkin spice is just chai tea spice. It tastes the exact same. Pumpkin spice is just a lie made up by big coffee that they try to sell you. With this flavor, we're gonna pair a coffee from a local roaster. Orin's coffee, Costa Rica La... Coast, Costa Rica? Costa Rica La Minita. That one. The notes are red fruit, floral, full bodied. And I only know this coffee even exists because I went there one time, it's, a, it's in the city. But I wouldn't have ordered it if it wasn't for Trade. Trade is the best way to get fresh coffee from local roasters delivered right to your door. Coffee's like the only gift that I like receiving because I know I'm gonna use it anyway. Trade has gift subscriptions and even one-time curated coffee boxes. Giftees can have their coffee curated to their personal tastes and brew style. That way, you don't even have to know too much about them. They can just get what they want. Whether it's for your own coffee needs or just an easy gift, head over to drinktrade.com slash wolfden for local fresh coffee in just a few clicks. And if you really want to wow someone, put a little bit of this in there. Just a little bit. Keep going. Keep going. And that should be good. And a little more. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just like that. That's what I like about it. I think the last Pow Kitty device that I made a dedicated video on was so bad that I titled the video something along the lines of emulation is terrible right now because there were just a lot of really bad devices at the time. That same year, companies like Ambernick and MiU released some of my favorite retro handhelds. So it turned around very quickly and hopefully Pow Kitty took some notes and made some adjustments to the stuff that they were making. This device is definitely a comfortable device. I love the big massive D-pad and its placement on here. Straight from the manufacturer, the RGB20 Pro can play NES all the way up to N64 and even Nintendo DS games. Although I would hesitate to recommend it for anything above Game Boy Advance. It has some pretty solid emulation when it comes to 2D stuff, but once we get into 3D territory, I'm personally, a little bit disappointed. In the past year, we've had better emulation quality from similar devices in the same price point, which is weird because I remember the RGB 30 being just fine when I got it and it's virtually the same hardware, so what gives? 
Well, the RGB 30 came with the Jellos operating system, which was originally designed as a custom firmware. Now, I don't want to start any rumors or point any fingers or anything, but I remember hearing at one point that Jellos wasn't very happy with these companies releasing their free custom firmware on their devices that they were selling. So Jellos has since disbanded and then came back together under the Rocknix name. So this RGB 20 Pro, which has the exact same internals as the RGB 30, runs on Arc OS. It's very similar. I tried to look up what happened with Jellos and Pow Kitty, and also it launched on some Ambernick devices. I remember there being some sort of drama, but uh, of course I can't find any proof of that right now. So just consider it a conspiracy theory for the moment. The launcher that Arc OS has is just a typical emulation station style launcher, which I don't hate. It makes me less compelled to put custom firmware on here. I don't love how N64 plays stock. It's a little bit slow. It also has some weird texture issues. I've seen this happen before with handhelds like this, and the fix is usually using a different emulation core. However, none of the emulation cores that came on here did N64 any better. So I would struggle to recommend this for N64 emulation specifically. I also noticed the thumbstick sensitivity is kind of for N64 games. It doesn't have the same cardinal direction snapping issues that the Ambrick devices have with stock firmware. The issue here is that there isn't a lot of walk-in room. You're either not moving or full sending it at all times. You can walk, it's just harder to do on here. Game Boy Advance runs great and so does Game Boy. And it does look pretty great on this device. But by default, they take up the whole 4x3 screen. It looks especially bad for Game Boy games, which are usually a 10 by 9 aspect ratio. Under RetroArch settings, video scaling aspect ratio, you can select 10 by 9. But then after that, you have to go all the way back to the root menu and save the configuration file. Now, every time you load a Game Boy game, it will look the way it was intended. Changing the setting also weirdly changed Game Boy Advance games to render at 3 by 2. I guess they use the same emulation core? Now, this screen's pixel layout doesn't really allow for pixel-perfect integer scaling. The resolution is 1024 by 768, which is a very strange resolution. However, that is a pretty heavily pixel-dense resolution. Even though the math doesn't add up perfectly when you scale a small Game Boy screen up to the full resolution of this screen, it looks just fine to me. I didn't notice any differences really at all when playing Game Boy or Game Boy Advance games without integer scaling turned on. You would expect to see some aliasing on here, but I didn't. So I'm happy to have my games scale to fit the whole screen on here. If you're a fan of shaders and filters, you might not like the ones that come stock on here. And some of those will have a problem without integer scaling. They do look a bit worse. SNES passes the Yoshi's Island test, but I won't be showing that on here because it gives Nintendo too much power over me and I don't like that. Mega Man X shows the horrors of non-integer scaling. The health bar is in uniform. Oh, the humanity. Integer scaling does fix this, but it does make the screen just a little bit smaller. There is also a sharp shimmerless shader preset. Say that three times fast. This allows the game to take up the full screen and also smooths out any scaling issues. This might be the best compromise, and it's an option that comes stock on the system. This does have the capability to run DS games, and to my surprise, they played pretty decent on here. A lot of DS games don't need you to be looking at two screens at the same time. Tapping a button to swap between screens works just fine for a lot of the DS library, but not Sonic Rush. That's rough. Okay, I understand. This is so confusing. Oh, this is not a good game for a single screen. <laughs> There isn't really a lot of slowdown on here for DS emulation. I'm surprised by how well DS runs. This also has the capability of PSP games, but I wouldn't put any stock into that. So overall, it's a decent device, but it does lose out on size and performance, especially if you're comparing it to everything else that's out there already. It's somewhere between the size of a Game Boy Color and a DMG Game Boy but it's definitely bigger than a lot of devices within the price point. The price is fine, it's around $70, but for the same price, there are devices that perform a little better. And a lot of those devices are more pocketable. 
you'd be getting this strictly for the looks. On the plus side, because this chip is so widely used, there is already custom firmware for this. I mentioned before that Rocknix is available for this, and it was extremely easy to put on here. Just download it from their GitHub, run the ISO through Bolina Etcher to put it on a fresh micro SD card. My issue was getting games on here. Moving them over to the SD card did not work for me. I had to use a second fresh micro SD card to put my ROM library on here. Nah, it's honestly not much better. It's still got slowdown. Oof, that was rough. I will give it credit though, the textures aren't freaking out. So it's got that going for it at least. At least Game Boy's the right aspect ratio. It might have taken my settings though. Basically, what you're getting here is the same OS. It's just got a different look to its launcher. That's really it. But Rocknix has Portmaster. I made a video on Portmaster a little bit ago. It's great on the Ambernic devices, and it's pretty much the same here. This is running maybe a little slower than it does on the Ambernic, but it's cool that you even have the ability to port PC games on here. You should watch my whole video if you want more information on it. But it's really easy to put some of your low-powered PC games on here and some games that are already ready to go. This device has Wi-Fi. I had it connected to my 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi band, but everything's fine. Portmaster allows you to just download some of its open source games that it has. This is just a random one that I downloaded called Overgun, but there is a pretty decently big library. Again, just watch my video on Portmaster if you want more information on it. So you can get a little more functionality with the custom firmware. You could also take the stock or the custom firmware and tweak it to be pretty decent. But there's just so many devices that work so great just right out of the box. There's so much competition now. It is nice to see something that's at least unique looking. The design is what drew me to it. It's what I like the most about it. It will definitely turn a few heads. It stands out. And you know what? It can play a lot of your game library just fine. But if you want the most bang for your buck and you want the most functionality, there are other options. Even if you want something that's more portable, Pal Kitty themselves have better options. You're literally just getting this for that cool chip window. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. I should mention that people pointed me towards Retro Breeze, who is working on a slimmer back piece for this. And I do intend on doing that to mine. I'll print it with this brand new bad boy that I got right here. I hit it way too hard. I like the way this thing is now, but imagine how cool it would be if it was super thin. That might change it a little bit for me. Anyway, what do you guys think about the Pal Kitty RGB 20 Pro? or Pal Kitty devices in general. I never really talk about them on here because I don't think a lot of them are that exciting. This one seemed exciting because it looked cool. And that's about it. Leave in the comments below. Add me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage. A lot of this stuff was streamed over on twitch.tv slash wolfden where the chat helped me out with this. It is helpful to publicly mess around with this stuff so that I can get ahead of some comments when they inevitably tell me I did something wrong. Thank you, Trade, for sponsoring this video. I've been drinking your coffee a lot. And of course, the most important thing you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here. We need more people to hit that button and that bell and share this video with a friend. A friend who might be interested in seeing the little chip on the inside of their handheld while they're playing it. Thank you very much. See you later.